In Jesus' name, we give him thanks. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for today's Bible study. We thank you because you will guide us again. You will lead us again. We thank you because you will graft us in your plan. We thank you because we receive patience to follow you. We thank you because we receive guidance in your world. In the name of Jesus. We pray, Lord, that we will find ourselves at the center of your will. We will not be too fast. We will not be too slow. We will be at the right center of your will. Today, moving forward, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, because you're going to comfort us. You're going to, you know, comfort our hearts. That in whatever we are going through at this phase, our eyes will be on the true picture. Our eyes will be on what matters, which is to please you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, so today, I don't know about you, because you don't know what I'm seeing, but I'm excited. You don't know what I'm seeing, but I know what I'm seeing. So I'm excited for another Bible study again. You are breaking. I'm breaking. Oh, my, my. Is this still breaking now? It's even uh, freezing. Freezing? Yes, we can hear you now. It looks good from here. It's breaking, breaking, breaking. What can I do? Yeah. Well, Paul is good. I think maybe it's from the person's end. It looks good to me. I can see everything looks good to me. Anyway, let's go to... To the, into today's business. Um, like I said, yeah, I'm excited because me, I know what I'm seeing, and you don't know what I'm seeing. So just be patient with me. You'll see what I'm seeing in a minute. We are done with our review, and we are going to John chapter 7. This John chapter 7, like I said at the beginning, I, I lost, not I didn't lost, I have a delayed luggage, so I don't have my Bible, my materials, everything was held on my luggage. So I said, okay, today I'm not going to teach. Unknown to the host that Brother Charles has an important appointment today. He has to go drop his mom at the airport. So he told me yesterday that, hey, he forgot he has an important appointment. He said, okay, no problem. Just scan me. No worry. No worry. Uh, the Spirit of God will help us. So the Spirit of God is more helping us today. And truly, it is the Spirit of God. I need a volunteer to read for us John chapter 7, verses 1 to 9. John chapter 7, verses 1 to 9. After these things, Jesus walked into Galilee, for he did not want to walk in Judea, because the Jews sought to kill him. Now the Jews' feast of tabernacles was at hand, his brothers therefore said to him, Depart from here and go into Judea, that your disciple also may see the works that you are doing. For no one does anything in secret, while he himself seeks to be known openly. If you do these things, show yourself to the world. For even his brothers did not believe in him. 6. Then Jesus said to them, My time has not yet come but your time is always ready. Seven, the world cannot hate you, but it hates me because I testify of it, that its works are evil. All right. So I don't know about you, but I've been reading this part, you know, for years. And uh, we have our own way of explaining Bible, but now thanks be to God that we have a better way of explaining Bible now. You know, if you look at verse one, after this, you know, that's a conjunction. It's connecting verse 7 to verse 6. Or to chapter, connecting chapter 7 to chapter 6. You know, we've always said this, that originally the Bible wasn't broken until like 18th century before they broke the Bible to help us to read better, to help us to track what we are reading. The Bible was one book, because it's a note that flew like that. So when you look at this, after this, it's a conjunction. It's connecting chapter 7 and chapter 6. At the close of chapter 6, you remember what we saw? Jesus made some funny, funny statement that you should eat my flesh and drink, you should drink, eat his flesh and drink his blood. And people took it literally and they went sad. They went away. Then later on in that chapter 6, Jesus opened up and said, come on, the things I say to you 
uh, their spirit and their life. In other words, it's not expecting them to take it like that, like many people are doing. I remember when I did secretism and the blood of Jesus with DSC, somebody called me and said, I was blasphemous. How can I say that? Whichever way. She took this blood of Jesus literally like these people. Anyway, connecting this thing together in this verse one, Jesus made a statement initially that got people to be skeptical. That is on the broader sense. But now in this chapter seven, we are looking at Jesus's brothers now, half brothers. And you know that Jesus have half brothers. Catholics don't want to agree because they want to they claim that Mary remains, remained as virgin to death. No, she didn't. She had other, she, other kids. I think it was James, the brother of uh, Jude. So here, at the, in chapter 6, the crowd did not understand him. They didn't believe him. But moving to chapter 7 now, it opened with the brothers of Jesus. The same thing that happened to the crowd also happened to his brother, his own half-brothers. They still didn't believe him. Do you know why? Because Jesus is not known in the flesh. So no one really has a special privilege by saying, you know what, I'm Jesus' brother and we have special revelation. No, no, no. Everyone knows Jesus by revelation. And Jesus is not known in the flesh. If you look at um, 1 Corinthians 2.14, who wants to read 1 Corinthians 2.14 for us? First Corinthians 2.14. Who wants to read First Corinthians two fourteen for us? Sorry, okay. I'm reading. Okay, so people who are spiritual can receive this truth from God's spirit. It sounds foolish to them, and they can't understand it. But only those who are spiritual can understand what the spirit means. Exactly, the carnal mind cannot understand Jesus. Only those who are spiritual will understand. So I understand when people are telling me that. How dare you say we can't pray in the name, with the blood of Jesus? I understand. I know that they're not born again. Because if they are spiritual, if they're born again, they will understand the things of the Spirit. But in this case, do you know that Jesus' brother, let me read something from verse 1 to verse 3. After this, Jesus traveled around uh, Galilee, he wanted to stay out of Judea, where the Jewish leaders were plotting his death. But soon it was time for a Jewish festival of Shepherds. And Jesus' brother said to him, Live here and go to Judea, where your followers can see your miracles. In other words, so his brothers know that he does miracles. And yet, verse 5 says, For even his brothers didn't believe him. Yet they know he does miracles. But they still didn't believe him. Because, oh, I have a question that I've answered myself. Yeah, I think I can still have the question. They didn't believe him. Who can? Who, do I have an idea why they didn't believe him? His brothers didn't believe him. They saw his miracles. Verse 5 says, even his brothers didn't believe him, but they attested to the fact that his dream miracle in Bastille. And Jesus' brother said to him, leave here and go to Judea, where your followers can see your miracles. In other words, they know that he does miracles. How come they don't believe him? Does anyone have an idea? I think I've failed the cat initially, but no problem. Does anyone have an idea? You can see the people that I've said. Come on, you've done the review in the last couple of weeks, so now we, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's that's not an interactive Bible study. Well, you have answered the question earlier. <laughs> this one can only be known by revelation. It it's only, not by miracle, it's not by anything, it's just by revelation. It can only be known by revelation. So his brother, they saw the miracles he was doing, and yet they didn't believe him. But today, miracles is what people are running after. Miracles don't make people believe in Jesus. No. It's good. But most of the time, it doesn't. Because in this scenario, this case that we are reading, they know this man does miracles. Yet they didn't believe him. But after conversion, after they also got converted, their narrative changed. You know, Jude, is also uh, Jesus' half brother. Let's look at Jude chapter 1. Jude chapter 1. 
This letter is from Jude, a slave of Jesus Christ and brother of James. No, 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 no. It was wrong. He, is, he, he was brother of Jesus and James. But at this time, he did not make himself equal to Jesus. Oh, he's not my brother. I am a slave. I am a brother of James. He corrected himself. So it's not a mistake. He corrected himself. Before, they would call themselves brothers of Jesus. We are all the same. But after conversion, he became a spirit man, a spiritual man. His understanding of Jesus changed. We may live in the same house. We may change the same we may exchange the same shoes, we may eat in the same plate, but we are not the same. So here he called himself the slave of Jesus and the brother of James. Look at what look at the language James also used. James 1:1. One, one. These are our brothers of Jesus. This letter is from James, a slave of God. <laughs> it is was wrong. A slave of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. No, 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 no. He is a slave of God and the brother of Jesus. Why did not say it again? He did not say that. His tenses change. His narrative change. Jesus is not known in the flesh. When we say Jesus is not known in the flesh, it means we cannot use physical parameters to define Jesus. I mean, for those who have been consistent with this Bible study, you should know that. The fact that there's a lot of money in your bank account doesn't mean that you are, you are special before God. Or the fact that there's no money in your account doesn't still mean that you are not special before God. All these physical things does not define who we are in Christ. All these physical things, the fact that you are married and you don't have kids doesn't mean that God does not love you and you are not born again. Because these are the things that we grew up to know. You know, come for this program. What are the highlights? Marriage, career, success, uh, children. Um, uh, breakthrough, isn't it? But in this, from what we are discussing now, that's not how we know Jesus. We don't know Jesus based on all these physical parameters. It's a spiritual thing, and spiritual things can be seen. Like, like we've always been saying, if you want to make money, go work. If I get too shit, like Pastor Ernest, go greet Uncle Sam. Money will come. <laughs> if you don't greet Uncle Sam, money will not come. If you don't go clock in and clock out, but those are not the parameters that we box ourselves into to define if we are accepted before God or not. No, we don't use physical things to know God. We know God based on revelation. And the revelation is not something exoteric. It's not something out of the world. It's not something that has never happened before. We know God based on who he is as revealed in the scripture. That's how we know God. So today, pastors want to prove that God is with them. They want to buy jets. So when they have jets, you can, it is happening here. No, that's not scriptural. You don't know God based on physical parameters. You know, a pastor came to my church when I was in the U.S. He was given apostolic stewardship of his assignment in Nigeria. He was pastoring the church for 10 years. Look at what he said. He said, when I got to that church, it wasn't built. We built the church. We put mechanical gem. We put interlocking ties. We put AC. Man, that's your ministry? What if that ministry catches fire? Do you still have a ministry? What if uh, there's, a, there's, there's an earthquake and the, ministry, the, the church sinks? Do you still have a ministry? No account of changed lives. No, at all. Everything he said was, we built this, we built that, we built that. And that's what they call ministry. That man did not do work for God. He only went to satisfy his ego. And that's what we do today. And that's what we have today, that people define church. You see, I remember a particular church I was going to, when the bishop writes his books, at the end of the pages, he will put pictures of, his, of, the, of, of, of church buses, pictures of university, picture of uh, uh, auditorium in Kenya, in Congo, in, in, in Germany, in well, Picture of buildings, that's what they call success. We don't know Jesus based on physical stuff. We don't prove if we, are, if, if we belong to Jesus based on physical stuff because Jesus is not in the flesh. You know, um, one of my pastors wrote this thing on Facebook one time ago. He said a, a, a missionary came to a particular church in the US and it was the, the church took him around to see, they were showing him what they have done. By the time he was, he was done working around, he said, now I have seen what you can do without the Holy Spirit. 
Now, show me what Holy Spirit is doing here. <laughs> you know, they show, took him around the, the teens church, the game center. You can do all those to that Holy Spirit. You can go get loan. You can raise seeds. You can get money. What is Holy Spirit doing? The testimony of changed lives. We don't know Jesus in the flesh. And whoever has deceived you, based on what they see. Because some people will say, look at those poor guys and Paul and Charles. What are they saying? Did, have you built a church? <laughs> Not, we don't know Jesus based on physical parameters. We know Jesus by revelation. We relate to Jesus by revelation. So verse 4, verse 3, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's what Holy Ghost is leading us to say at this time. Verse 4, you have become famous. If you 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 can be you can't become famous if you hide like this. If you can do such wonderful things, show yourself to the world. That is very important. Hmm. Today's Bible study is interesting because my heart is maybe because it's been a while. And my heart is is my heart wants to jump out of my body. Mark this word very well. Pay close attention. Verse four. You can't become famous if you hide like this. If you can do such wonderful things, show yourself to the world. Mind you, the people who told him to show himself were unbelievers. We just proved that they didn't believe in Jesus. Now look at how they are thinking. Showmanship. Look at how they are thinking. Go show yourself with all these miracles. If they put into this English, go open a shop, go start a church, open a shop, open kiosk, sell franchise, go show yourself. In broader sense, we know that his brothers did not believe him. So we can take the advice as that of an, of an unbeliever. And what are those advice that are giving Jesus? One, you can become famous. Two, you can start a movement. Three, you can open a shop. Four, show yourself to the world. You know, Rachel and I were speaking yesterday. If it were to be before, that I know 5% of what I know now, I would have opened a shop. Paul and Jazz Church, group of companies. If I told you before, we will have opened a shop. Oh, even before knowing quota of what we know now, we will have opened a shop. We will start a church. And that is what is happening here. Show off is not the character of God. That is something I want us to take home from this chapter, verse 4. Show off is not the character of God. The people who said, if you go show off, we're not believers. But that show off that they said to Jesus, go show off yourself. They said, you can't become famous. Show off yourself. Because that is what a natural man would think is to impress people you don't know with what you don't have. To impress people who don't even care. They told Jesus, go show off yourself. But Jesus did not respond to them. Because that is not show off, it's not the character of God. But this, this incident or this statement they made opened up to us in the many verses in this chapter 7, verses 1 to 9. It, no matter, the, the, the message, two messages in this verse 4, show off is not the character of God. But the second message, God has a timetable of doing his things. This is a big message that we have to take home today. God has a timetable of doing his things. In Acts 9, verse 11, God called Ananias to go pray for Paul, for Saul. Then it was this Saul. Of course, it's the same thing. Saul and Paul are the same thing. Uh, one is um, Greek and one is uh, Roman. Greek is Saul. Romans is Paul. All right. So God told Ananias, go pray for Saul. He prayed for Saul. A miracle happened. But Ananias did not start Ananias' healing crusade. 
He did not start Ananias because God did not lead him to do such. He did not even want to pray for so That was not his thought. It was God in his plan, in his timetable, that prompted him to go do that. And after he did what God wanted him to do, we didn't hear him again. Because God has timetable for doing his things. They wanted Jesus to go perform miracle. They wanted. In fact, Jesus wasn't even on head based on his own terms, not to talk of the terms of people. You know, many things we do today, we do them because of people. You know, many things we do today, we do them because of people. Oh, you know, I, for us Nigerians in diaspora, many things people do when I was in the States was because of people. You buy a car because your friends are buying a car. You want to buy this kind of house because of friends are buying that kind of house. You can look at yourself. I know now we are Christians and we are found in Jesus of the Bible. We don't do that no more. But we, that's not far from our thinking. I'm not saying something strange. We take some actions because of people. And we allow people to push us out of God's plan. Here in verse 4, they asked Jesus, they, to go and show off, to go do miracle. The Jesus that was not here based on his own terms, you are expecting to respond to man's terms. I'm going somewhere. Just follow me. In verse 5, for even his brother didn't believe in him. Verse 6, Jesus replied, now is not the right time for me to go. But you can go at any time. The world can't eat you, but it does eat me, because I accuse it of doing evil. You go on, I am not going to this festival, because my time has not yet come. Verse 6. Verse 6 was the response to the question, to the, to the, uh, to the statement they made in verse 4. In verse 4, they said, you can't become famous if you hide so they asked him, come on, open up, go do some miracles. This guy performed some miracles. And what was Jesus' reply in verse 6? Now is not the right time for me to go. See, that is taking us deeper into this conversation. The first time in this book of John, when Jesus made that statement was in John 2 verse 4, when wine ran out in Canaan of Galilee at the wedding in the of Galilee. And he said to his mom, woman, my time has not yet come. And if you study that John 2 properly, it was connecting to his crucifixion. But the timing he's using here, it's not connecting to his crucifixion. It's not connecting. So what's going on here? What's going on here? Why did he make that statement? You see, it's a normal, John, by the help of the Holy Spirit, wrote in this book of John, for us to look at it in a much more deeper sense and understand how God sees things. You see, verse 6 makes his response to his brother clear. My time is not yet, has not yet come. Like I said, the same word he used in John 2. So, what is going on here? This is showing us something that Jesus, every day to day, um, Every day-to-day -day plan or every day-to-day -day activities is planned. He is working based on an invisible plan. I will prove it. Galatians 4.4. 4. Jesus' everyday activity is working by an invisible plan. This is the first message we have to, second message you have to take home now. We've, I've said one before. This is the second message you have to take home. Galatians 4.4. 4. Galatians 4, 4. But when the right time came, God sent his son, born of a woman, subject to the Lord. In other words, Jesus came to die for our sin at a particular time. When that time was ripe, he showed up. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 6, or 5 and 6. Okay, five, for there's one God and one mediator that can, who can reconcile God and humanity, the man Christ Jesus. He gave his life to purchase freedom for everyone. 
this is a message God gave to the world at just the right time. So Jesus came at the right time. So who set the time? This man was working based on an invisible plan that we did not see. It did not come because he wanted to come. He came because the time was right. Let's look at another thing about his timing. John. No. So yeah, it's a soft. John 17, 1. So there's a time where he was born. Look at another thing. John 17, 1. John 7, after saying all these things, Jesus looking up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son so he can give glory back to you. This was when he was about to, be dead, to, to die. He was about to be crucified at crucifixion. So there was a time when he was given birth to, and there was a time when it was time for him to go. So he is telling us here that Jesus was working based on an invisible plan. God has a specific, a special timetable for all of his life. Everything was timed. Look at when he went to John 4. How come that woman was at the way that day? He was working based on specific timetable, specific plan, invisible plan. All that Jesus did was not coincidence. Everything was planned by the invisible God. So he was just taking those steps at the right time, and those pl- the steps were, f- were fulfilling prophecy. At one point, I think in Luke, he said, in Luke 4, I have come in the volumes of the book, on, it, it was in Luke and also in uh, Hebrews, I've come in the volumes of the book written about me, or in the multitude of books written about me. There was an invisible plan that Jesus was just walking into at each time, at each time, at each time. And if you look at that, it's not, and Jesus is our model, is our first fruit. If there's first in logic, there must be second. They didn't say Jesus is the fruit. It's the first fruit. It's a prototype. You know, it came to start something. It came to start the new order where we can carry Holy Spirit two for seven. So if there was plan for his life, who told you there's no plan for our life too? Everything we are going through, every of our day-to-day event is planned by God. Praise God. Now, look at Galatians 1.15. Paul. Galatians 1.15. So somebody will say, that is Jesus because he's God. All right, cool down, calm down, calm down. But even before I was born, God chose me and called me by his marvelous grace. But we know that God called Paul in Acts 9, and that's what we know. But it's not Acts 9. Paul has been in God's plan before the foundation of the world. Judges, when Samson showed up, Samson came from the tribe of Benjamin. He blew the opportunity. Philistines thought they have captured that tribe. But no, in Philippians 3, Paul also came from the tribe of Benjamin. In other words, no one can kill the plan of God. The Philistines did all they could through whichever means until they got something through Delilah. But that was not the end. The plan of God can be destroyed. Saul, Paul, came from the tribe of Benjamin. So if Paul is saying God chose him from the birth, from the womb, he knows what he's talking about. Because technically, he came from the tribe of Samson. But what we know is he was called in Acts 9. No, it's the plan God has for his life is way beyond Acts 9. Acts 9 was just a matriculation day that God picked him physically. Jeremiah also had a similar thing. Jeremiah 1, 5. Jeremiah 1, 5. I knew you before I formed you in your womb. Before you were born, I set you apart. See, when we read this, we always think, oh, it's for the prophet of old. This is the character of God. He has planned for everything. Everything is planned. There's a timetable for everything. There's a time for everything. In fact, it was in divine plan that today we'll be doing Bible study together. I was going to my archive this morning. I was smiling. 
I remember when I took DSA, we started Bible study in America, and we are just five. When this wasn't in the picture that we'll be doing Bible study like this to people in Europe and Nigeria, it wasn't in the picture. But as to me, I thought it was, I thought it wasn't the picture. I did not have plan practically to do this. My plan was to do it for people in America. And the people in Europe began to say, no, Sister Francisca is here. She said that, uh, maybe Brother Hero or what, someone else, Sister Han and Sister, um, 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 Sister Han and uh, one of the other, Sister Nancy, they wrote to me and said, which you want to join? That was when I started. Can you imagine what has happened in the last seven months? It is not coincidence. It is all that we are in God's plan. And that's why I'm glad that we are in God's plan. If you think God is far, I have this sense of feeling today that God is really not far at all. We are, I'm, I'm glad we are in his plan. Jeremiah 29, 11 again. The same thing, Jeremiah, that's 1, 5. Jeremiah 29, 11. Jeremiah 29, 11. You know, I sent a testimony. There's somebody here, Sister Baby is here. I sent a testimony she sent to me months ago. We have, we have not been this close. She doesn't, we don't know ourselves. She said she had me on DSA's platform. She sent me a testimony months ago. Today we are all one big family. God has a plan. It, it, it has been from the foundation of the world that today we will be together. And that's why somebody, Sister Dr. Heidi said yesterday that I love this family. You cannot but love this family because it's not our making. It is the making of the Father. We are just glad. We are, we are blessed to find ourselves in this family. Jeremiah 9, uh, 29, 11. For I knew the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and of hope. God punished religion and his mother-in-law. They have used this place to tell us, you know, the plan is prosperity. Come on, the plan is far beyond prosperity. The plan is the plan of the Messiah. And the Messiah in anyone's life is the greatest we can ever have. But God is saying here that I know the plans. God is a master planner. Nobody prayed in, John, in Genesis 1, 26 for God to create heaven and earth. No one prayed. No one consulted God. No one fasted. No one so seeds. No one did anything. He, God, out of his sovereignty, out of his own prerogative, created man. What was he thinking when he created man? He's still thinking the same thing now. He's a master planner. Every of Jesus' life, was he was working based on that timetable. In John 2, he said, my hour has not come. John 2, 4. Here, he also said, my time has not come. The time he's talking about here is not for him to die. It's just that this guy, this man, is working based on an invisible timetable. So even if we will go to the feast, it will not be by their own instigation. It will not be based on their own terms. It will be based on God's schedule. He actually went to the feast. We'll continue that one next week. But not based on their schedule. Not based on their prerogative. And that is taking us to one application. I'm going to speak about two applications here. God has plan. God has a plan. And holy is plan at its time will come to pass. So no one can twist the hand of God. See why John picked this story and he put it in the book of John? Because it really doesn't make sense. He wanted to go to the feast. And if his brother said, go do miracles. And Jesus stepped back. He's telling us that we can't move the hand of God based on our own terms. That's why anybody who is telling you that the move of God is predictable is a liar. Because you can't predict the move of God. In Acts 2, when Holy Ghost came, they all spoke in tongues. In Acts 9, when G. Paul got converted, he did not speak in tongues. In Acts 11, Colonius he spoke in tongues. It's God, he's doing his things his own way. So I can predict the move of God. You, Sister Francisca, just give me $1,000 as you give me. I'm telling you what God will do. He's a lie. You can't twist the hand of God. He does not act based on our prerogative. There's no formula to moving the hand of God. That's why God wants relationship from us. Ephesians 6, 19, it said, pray in the spirit. What does it mean to pray in the spirit? The same thing Jude said, pray in the spirit. What does it mean to pray in the spirit? Is it, does it mean to pray in tongues? No. 
To pray in the Spirit means to pray as being led by the Spirit, which can also include praying in tongues, but not necessarily praying in tongues. God wants us to relate with Him based on relationship. In relationship, there is no room. That's why we are saved by grace. So God has a plan, and Holy Spirit's plan at His time. We cannot choose the hand of God, correct? Only God's plan at His time will come to pass. That is the first application. Second application, the sovereignty of God overrides our limited understanding. Third application, this, this is not, this is my assumption now. So you should be familiar to this kind of prayer point. Lord, you must answer me this week. No, you can't do that. God, Pastor Hinde just laughing. You must answer me this week. No, he has time. He must answer me now, now. No, he will answer you, but he has time. There's timetable. Jesus has proven to her that there's a timetable for everything God is doing. Paul was called in his room. Jeremiah was called in his room. Even Moses was created for that assignment. God has plan. We do not come to this earth based on our own terms. How come out of all the living creatures, only human beings can talk? Because God has a purpose for everything. We are not disconnected from God. We are not just existing based on our own terms. We are existing because God created us. So God, you must answer me this week. Lord, according to the declaration of my pastor, you must act. How? According, my pastor has decreed and declared. How? You can't push God like that. He does things based on his own terms, in his own way, at his own time. Lord, you must respond to my seed. This seed must answer. How? If it's not in his plan, it's not, nothing is going to happen. So if you sow seed and something happened, it's because it was in his time. If you sow seed and nothing happened, it's because it is not his time. So I'd rather go for wait for his time than to twist him. Does it add up? I'd rather wait for it. That's why we pray to always align ourselves in his plan because that is where we will be stressless. So we have stressless victories. You know, I was telling my chances, I said, I don't like to suffer. I will now go and open shop. I will be praying, God, bring people, God, bring people, God, bring people. When God has not sent me to go open a shop, I call it shop, it's church, you know, but I call it shop. I will go and open a shop and God has not sent me to go open a shop. Before you know it, you start proper lying. Before you know it, you start joining cliques. Before you know it, you join association of uh, Nigerian preachers in diaspora. Before you know it, you know that your founder of the association is uh, Waliuki or, or uh, Ayo Rishaja for you. You know because you want to succeed. You want to break through. We are having camp, uh, a camp meeting in Toronto in July. No Andy. No flyer, no advertisement. In fact, I don't even know what we have not. Really, it just we just said it. We have close to twenty people who have indicated about half of them have paid. And I like to do what God's leading me to do. That is in His own time, in His own way. Let's learn from that. That's why we pray. We pray to always remain in His plan, not to be too fast not to be too slow, to always be at the right center of his timing. That is the greatest prayer we can always pray for ourselves. Lord, you must reward me for my kingdom service. You see, I'm in choir, I'm in usher, I'm in protocol, I'm in this, I'm I, 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 evangelism. Evangelism is the other two. Because I have done evangelism, God, you must. Come on, there's nothing we can use to twist the hand of God. It's a sovereign God. So please understand the sovereignty of God. Please understand. In Genesis 1, 26, who prayed? Who sowed seed? Who planned? Who consulted with God for him to create us? Nobody. He created us based on his own prerogative at his own time for his own purpose. Isaiah 43, verse 7. So you see why I was excited that to this Bible study is, uh, is awesome. It's going to be awesome. Example for the 3 verse 7. Bring all who claim me as their God, for I have made them for my glory. It was I who created them. He's made them for what? His glory. For his glory. 
He did not make us for ourselves. He made us for himself. Revelation that Pastor Eddie he likes quoting very well. So let's also echo it together. Revelation 4.11. Revelation 4, 11. You are worthy, O Lord, our God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, including you and I, and they exist because you, because you created what you pleased. Let me read it for you in KJV so you, you have the whole feel. Thou art worthy, O God, to, o Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. I think we should sing that song together. Thou our world. Omit, let's omit ourselves just for now. Let's sing that song together. Be who Lord. Meet back now. Acts seventeen twenty four. Acts seventeen twenty four. You know, this is a Bible study that I can quote Bible the way I want. That's where people don't understand. When you quote too much Bible, they are lost. People are they have been fed nonsense. Acts seventeen twenty four. God is worthy. He has created us for His own pleasure. He has timetable for everything. And that was what Jesus was showing us. In John 2, he said, my time. In John 7, he said, my time. Everything has time. Everything has time. I'm praying God should just give me patience. I don't know about you. Patience to be patient. Grace to be patient for his timing. Grace to just be patient. To, I mean, and one of those things that can make us be patient is to align with the word of God. You know, Joshua 1.8. He said, if you meditate on this book, this law, you observe to, to, as you observe to do, then you have good success. They think that success is academic success, marital success. In Joshua, what God gave him was to lead God's covenant people to the promised land. For you to be patient and for you to be focused in that assignment, this Bible will help you. That is the meaning of Joshua 1.8. So for us to be patient, for us to be calm, for us not to drift, we must graft ourselves and graft ourselves in this Bible more. It will help us to be patient. It will help us to be focused. It will align us more and more. So I know in True Search Free, we don't have time for rubbish talk. But if you are still here and you still go listen to rubbish talk, it's going to drift you back out of God's plan. So Acts 17, 24 is the God who made the world and everything in it. Since he is the Lord of heaven and earth, he doesn't live in man-made temples, and human and can serve his needs, for he has no need. Oh my God! So you sow seed to move the hand of God. He has no need. I saw an article yesterday. Somebody is saying sow seed to you can so they can build a mansion in heaven. As you sow, as you pay your tithe, God is using that tithe to build a nonsense, gibberish, gibberish, rubbish, and. You and, and human hands can serve his need, for he has no need. Because if he has need, how was he serving the need before he created the human being? He has no need because he's been existing before man existed. So he has no need. He himself gives life and breath to everything, and he satisfies every need. For no one, for one man he created, from one man he created all the nations throughout the whole earth. He decided beforehand when they should arise and fall, and he determined their boundaries. That's why to set free today is not a mistake. God knows that today we'll be sharing Bible together before the foundation of the world. When the fullness of time came, we met ourselves. See, I was looking at how it got started today. I was. We're tracking back to how it got started. 
I never knew I was good. GSA was going to announce it on this program. I never knew. I was just doing me, but I can't sister Gbemi is here, but I can't on his way. Sister Bridget, she should be on her way. Sister Bridget, but I can't sister Gbemi. And uh, Sister Jane, we were just discussing Bible. And I said, oh, GSA, I just sent him a message, sir. We are starting, we started Bible study in, in America. He said, oh, he said, people would like to benefit. Come to my program. And I came to his program. And that's how we all found ourselves. It was never in my plan. But it was in his plan. Everything has timetable. Whatever you are going through now, God has not forgotten you. And he will not because he does not forget. When Bible says God remember, it came to Moses and said, God remember the covenant. It doesn't mean that he's forgetful. He has bipolar. The word remember means he's acting on the promise, on the covenant. He's acting based on the covenant. That's the meaning of God remember the covenant. He's acting based and to prove that he was acting based on the covenant in exodus chapter 2 moses just committed murder in exodus chapter 3 he was standing on holy ground by marriage he does not deserve to serve to stand on holy ground but by the covenant god chooses what he remembers and he chooses what he does not remember so he does not count moses as a murderer because he was acting based on the covenant that is the meaning of god remember it's not forgetful god has not forgotten you let me share this testimony. I don't like saying personal things, but let me just say this now. I went out of Canada for a month and I'll be working to get an apartment. When I get back, I want to move to a new apartment. From two weeks to my coming back, I've been trying, I've been trying, send email, call managers, la 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 la. My wife was bothered. How are you gonna do it? I said, we are Christians and God will take care of us. So just relax. As I go to Canada, as I take that of the plane. I was feeling phone for my luggage that got missing. Wow, the manager called me. When do I want to come and resume? I need to be at my job area on Monday. I said I will come on Sunday. I'm going to move to the house on Sunday. So I won't be sleeping in the car. God does not forget us. He has planned in his own way at his own time. I did not sow seed for that. I'm just going to preach, see my family, come back. God has planned. And he will answer us in his own way at his own time. And that's what we are proven here. He has determined, KJV said, he has determined the bound of their habitation. He knows where we'll be today if you're in Europe. He knows you'll be in Europe today. It's not a fluke. It's not by coincidence that you're in Nigeria, you're in Germany, you're in Canada. Ah, no. See, a month ago, God showed me a revelation. He said, he delivered me from the bondage of America for a purpose. Oh, so I was telling my wife last night. So America was a bondage. I mean, I thought I was in America. So it was a bondage. God said, he delivered me from the bondage of America for a purpose. One of those purposes is what I'm doing now. So to me, people will say that guy is in the state, but it was a bondage in the eyes of God. He knows everything and he has planned everything. Verse 8 is very interesting. John 7, verse 8. John 7, verse 8. You go on. I am not going to this festival because again, my time has not yet come. Of course, he went, but not on their own terms. It is not for us to fit Christ into our life's agenda. You know, some of you say most of the churches today, they are the one using Jesus. Jesus is not using them. And it's true. Because in Matthew 7, 21, 23, 2, 23, 24, people use Jesus. We cast out demons in your name. We heal the sick in your name. I never knew you. He, does, he didn't use them, but they used him. So it's not a strange thing. Here, they wanted Jesus to go based on their terms. This is what most of us are doing before. I know we don't do it again now because we are in two sets free. We put Jesus in our own mode. It is not for us to fit in into our own lives and our life's agenda on our own terms. Mm -mm. He has come so that we might be caught up and filled or fitted in God's plan. We don't fit Jesus into our plan. Rather, we are grafted into his plan because he has created us for his own pleasure. This act that I want to read now, we open this message in a broader sense and uh, we were, we are, I'm bringing it home now. I'm bringing it home. Acts chapter 1, verse 6. 
So in verse 8 that I just read now, I uh -uh, said my time has not come, so it didn't go to the feast at the time they said it. So you now look at yourself now. Most of the prayer, you, your prayer requests, just go and tear it and be rest assured that God knows you. He knows you have this need. He knows you are crying in secret. He will take care of you in his own time. At his, in, in his own time, in his own way. He will take care of you. Live your life to the fullness. Enjoy the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Do not de define God based on what you have or what you don't have. Do not define God based on what's going on in you or around you. Be rest assured. I'm saying this to someone right now. You have not been experiencing peace. Relax in Christ. He will take care of you. Let peace of God flood your heart. Today, moving forward, there's nobody in this planet void of problem except you die the day you give your life to Christ. And even if you die, wife put husband in problem. Husband put wife in problem. Anyone that dies puts people who are alive in problem. They'll start taking off barrier. They'll start taking off <laughs> money. <laughs> so relax your mind in Christ. God will take care of you. He has not forgotten you. You are special to him, but he has planned for everything. Act 1, 6. So when the apostles were with Jesus, they kept asking him, Lord, has the time come for you to free Israel and restore our kingdom? They are not talking about heaven here. They are not talking about the kingdom of God. They are talking about their kingdom. These were Jesus' disciples who had also been with him for a long time. That's why I'm saying Jesus is not known in the flesh. They were not born again. They were, not, they were not, people pray from ignorance, but as we, we, we believers, we have to pray from understanding, praise God. You know, this last, if you're not be joining us on Tuesday, please make do. This last Wednesday, sorry, Wednesday prayer meeting, two people, me and Brother Charles shared fantastic testimony about that prayer. What we are going through that we needed was the things we pray for, not that we need cow. You know, we, we pray for the presence of God. Yeah, I, I won't talk more about I won't talk, I won't say more than that. You come, remember that chance comes, he'll tell you about it's not that we needed cow, we needed money, but the presence of God, that the direction that prayer went, I'll be singing that song, Your presence means heaven to me. I'll be playing that song every day. In fact, after this episode, we'll play it again. Your presence means heaven to me. Those are the kind of prayer I pray these days. It's not, it's, it's not to buy car, you don't have, if you don't have money, buy it on credit. <laughs> right. If you don't want to, if you need jeans, if you don't have money, use credit card, you buy jeans, you know. But I need something that is far more than that, and it's the presence of God. Not that we don't have it, we have it, but to be aware and to be conscious of it. That was the direction of that prayer point on Wednesday. You have to make it, you have got the kind of the leading God is leading us in those kind of prayers, they are apostolic. Now, in verses, Lord, uh, uh, so when the apostles well, with Jesus, this was after Jesus had resurrected. That's your, oh, that is your health care number. This was after Jesus Christ had resurrected. Okay, uh, they were they asked him a question, Lord. As they asked him, they kept asking him, Lord, as the time come for you to free Israel and restore our kingdom, it's not the kingdom of heaven, no. because as at that time they were under the oppression of the Roman Empire. So they were asking him, now that you die and you rose again, you are so powerful. Now anybody, I mean, can you imagine you saw a ghost, you know that ghost has power. We use this power to free us from the Roman Empire. Look at Jesus' reply. He replied, the father alone has the authority to set those dates and time. And they are not for you to know. In other words, your problem and your situation is only determined by God. <laughs> that was a big problem for them, right? But coming out of that big problem can only be determined by God. You know, see the next thing he now did. But you will receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you and you will weaken. They were in problem. He said, go weakness because he will take care of you. He said, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will receive, and you will be my witness telling people about 
everywhere, telling people about me everywhere in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. Let's stop there. You will see they had problem. They are, were in oppression. And they asked him, with this power we saw from you, ah, we have never seen you maybe come from heaven. Will you now disappear? Like you disappear to us and just appear at a, 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 the Roman Empire's palace and just kill them. <laughs> but he said, forget about that time, that one. But the one I will give you now, the power I will give you now is to witness for me in the midst of their problem. Do you know why? Because that was not the reason why Jesus came. He did not come to solve this physical problem. He came to give us eternal life. God has planned for everything. That same Roman Empire that they want that kingdom to collapse, eh, was the same thing that became a catalyst for the gospel. Because God does his things in his own way at his own time. Yes, the slavery did not last forever. We know today, Israel today don't have that kind of slavery again. But as at that time, there's a divine plan. It was that same empire that served as catalyst in Acts 7. Because they were also like us. When we receive Holy Ghost today, what we do? Flash back to Nigerian church. We lock ourselves up with breaking thoughts. Vibrate the place, shake the ground, then we all go home. No. That's not why God gave us. That was not why Jesus gave us power of the Spirit. He gave us power of the Spirit to witness. They were locking themselves in one room. The Bible said they would pray and the ground would shake. And that's what we do today. We vibrate, cause commotion, cause confusion in the street, lock uh, uh, kilometer five down because we are, free, we are praying. But God used this same Roman Empire that they want Jesus to come and crash at that time. God used it as a catalyst for spreading the gospel. It was because of that that God arrested Saul because he killed Stephen. It was because of that that Philip ran to Samaria. He met Ethiopian Enoch. If he didn't go to Samaria, he may not have met Ethiopian Enoch. And through that Ethiopian Enoch, according to history, gospel came to Africa. What they call problem was a catalyst in the hand of God. But did God not abolish slavery? He did but not in their lifetime, in his own way, at his own time. But he still gave them the power to witness. So they were in bondage of Roman Empire. They were in, in the subjugation. But the power Jesus gave them was not to solve their temporary problem, was to graft them to God and to commission them for mission. An apostolic church, the... the, the one of the great ways to know that Holy Ghost is moving in a group, either church or fellowship, is when people go on mission. In Acts 13, they were praying and fasting. And let's even read that so that from Amplified. Acts 13. Acts 13. What is that called now? One. Let me read it from Amplified Version. Okay, we're about to land in our fall. Now, the church at Antioch, now in the church at Antioch, they were prophets. Now, I decided to open this up in Amplified. Prophet in the New Testament is not somebody who is telling your bank account, your street address. I know we know that already. We open it up and say, Who spoke? Prophet spoke a new message of God to the people. Okay, it's something from God. And Prophet, prophecy. Bible said in the revelation that the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So when we are sharing God's word like this, we are prophesying. When Acts said, and the Holy Ghost will come upon you and the sons and daughters shall prophesy, it doesn't mean that you will stand on the street and start saying the name of people's father and tell them their back account. It means that we will give witness to prophesy in the New Testament, it means to give witness to the evidence of Jesus. That's what it means to prophesy in the New Testament. So there's a general prophecy when we come into Christ, and there's some specific people who we teach, like what is happening in this Antioch church. So prophecy is giving new message of God to God's people by teaching. 
So it's not something you come to church and just say, eh, you just say, I saw your back at the It's teaching, teaching. Can you say, who spoke a new message of the God's people and teaches? Barnabas and Saul and Simeon, who was called Nigra, Lucius of Cyrene, Manin, who had been brought by, brought up with Herod, Antipas, the Tetrarch and Saul, verse 2. Why did they serving the Lord and fasting? The Holy Ghost said, set apart for me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work which I have called them. Move of the Spirit to prove that Holy Ghost is moving in the fellowship in the church is when people go out. When people get the leading, I want to go share the gospel. When people, but today, if you, if you tell your pastor, hey, hey, I got the leading, you become a rebel. Holy Ghost is not working there. Hey, I got a leading to go share the gospel. I got a leading to go on mission. Your pastor will look at, hey, that's another place going. You know, then you become a rebel. The Holy Ghost is not working there. Anywhere Holy Ghost is working, people will have leading to go share the gospel. That is the purpose of the power of the Holy Spirit. The witness for Christ. To go and share for the gospel. So at this point, in Acts 1, 9, uh, Acts 1, 6 to 8 that I read, they asked Jesus, when are you going to save our kingdom? Jesus said, only God knows that time. Because he has time for everything. And he uses everything for his pleasure. You might, they might call it bondage to Herod. But Jesus, God does not see it that way. He saw catalyst for the gospel. So whatever you are going through right now might look like a pain. But what God is doing behind the scene is far more and far greater than whatever we know. That's why we pray. We need to pray. That in the midst of what we are going through, that God should lead, keep leading us. God should keep guiding us to always be in his plan. That the plan in our heart, we align with the plan in his heart. When we do that, um, we may not be a millionaire. It may, we may be a millionaire. Just a lot of, I'm rounding up now so you can come on board. You can, we may not be a millionaire. And we may be a millionaire, it doesn't matter. But when we are in his plan, one thing is sure. We will always have peace. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of sound mind. We will always talk about when we are led of God. At this point, I pray in the name of Jesus that we will always be in God's timetable. We will always be in God's plan. We will not be too fast. We will not be too slow. We will be at the right center of the plan Amen. for our life. Situation and circumstances, fashion, greed, desire, pleasure, cares of this world, deceitfulness of riches, do not take Jesus. us away from this plan. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. Amen. commit ourselves to you as a family. Amen. Because Amen. what we are doing today is not a coincidence. It was planned at all. Of the world. Self to you that you keep guiding us, you keep leading us. That years from now we will reference this Bible study. I said, thank God that we expose the truth of God's word because truth is actually set free. In Jesus, we are praying. Amen. 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 Right, Amen. Salah, you've been pointing your hands, so let's, let's have you. You're on mute, so can I help you? Just to watch, uh, to watch what you have been telling us since. Okay, it's just um, the scripture that came to my oh. mind is Habakkuk 2, yeah. 3. Okay. Habakkuk. I will stand up on my watch. Yeah. Write the vision and make it plainer. What's that? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Is it for the, for the vision? <laughs> for the vision is yet an appointed time, time. But at the end, it shall speak. And not lie, though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will surely come. It will not tarry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just a buttress of the encouragement you'll be giving us and the teaching that whatsoever our plan may be, we should not run 
ahead of time will wait. It might tarry, but the will of God will surely come to be pass. done. Will surely come to pass. Yeah. We yeah. should not rush God. We cannot rush God anyway. So we will. We. I mean, it's just to, it just, that's the scripture that drop into my heart when you are teaching yeah. us. Thank you, man. That whatsoever our problem, whatsoever the plan, whatsoever the vision that we might have, we should wait upon the Lord. Yeah. It will surely come to pass. Yeah, you're right. Thank you so much, man. That is the word of the Lord for us today. As we study, can you imagine the book of John? Just John 7, 1 to 9. And that is powerful for us. You know? Uh, the line is open. I don't want to talk now. We are all... Sister Divine, you want to say something? No, okay, okay, okay. So we can't, Sister Francisca, we can't twist the hand of God. We can't. He has, he, he does his things in his own way at his own time. That was why Odoma, when Paul was writing Ephesians 6, Ephesians 6, 5 to 9, he was addressing slave owner. And he never said slave owner, by the virtue of the anointing given to me, go abolish your slavery. No, he told them the gospel. He told the slaves, he didn't tell slaves that because you are in Christ now, the bondage you just go. They were slaves. He just left them alone. <laughs> he only focused on the gospel to both the slave owner. Oh, who is Pastor Macaulay? Why are you sharing his king? I'll kick him out. Pastor Macaulay. Okay. I'll save you. I will have kicked you out. You know, Paul only focused on the gospel. God did abolish the slavery but in his own time, at his own way. Oh, uh, Sister Francisca, go ahead, ma'am. Uh, yes, this also makes me to reflect on what, on the discussion we were having last week, which also reminds me again, you know, my thoughts are going here and there, of uh, John 6, 28, okay. where Jesus said, uh, we shouldn't consign ourselves to this thing that we should spend our energy of eternal things. So when you say we should align, our prayer time should be aligning, aligning our lives, surrendering to his plan. Because he has plans for us and he has time for everything. So it, it, it now rings the bell what he said in John 6, 27. Of course, it makes sense not to use our prayer time to set for things and and grab things like we have been taught all this while, but to use our faith. <laughs> yeah, like I shared the testimony of my of my, of getting having a daughter after praying and praying. So I'm just thinking that those time of prayers and those time of waiting. <laughs> <laughs> wasted time. Is it that God, energy is that it should just, okay. to yeah. ask God to reach out to save souls around me? Well, I'm I'm learning, and I thank God that I'm in this platform to learn more. If it, if your daughter came, it's because it was in his plan. Yes, it's in plan. plan, but I'm learning another side of what yeah. I should do with my faith and prayers. It's not your fault now. You've been told that all the while. Me and God. Me, I, I, I was told when I went to Shiloh that anything can happen. I was using communion to gaggle so that only my teeth can go until I met Dr. Uh, Prophet Doctor. <laughs> after 30 minutes surgery, and the miracle God cannot do in 10 years, no, not God, the miracle Shiloh cannot do in 10 years, Dr. Pastor Prophet Doctor did it in 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Hallelujah. Um, uh, can I just contribute a bit? Right, sir. Uh, Brother Paul, you are still recording. Yeah, because we have time. I have like 12 minutes. Okay. Uh, um, I just want to thank God for uh, this uh, fellowship and things like this. Um, what I want to contribute is that we as believers, I just sent it privately to Paul. See, we have been given one tool and one single tool, which the people of the Old Testament had none of it. And you see, when um, in Matthew 11, 11, when he was saying that uh, even the least in the kingdom 
is greater than John the Baptist. He was talking about the way the Spirit uses us. So when, they, when you see prayers in the Old Testament, they are praying from ignorance because they do not have the Spirit within them. So we have Spirit that lives in us. We need to have fellowship with that Spirit. Having fellowship with the Spirit will guide you. In prayer, in everything you do, it will guide you. And it's my submission because uh, I want us to be like Paul said, not that my hands has touched it, I'm reaching out. Uh, and that's what we need to keep in mind, that the Spirit will, kind, will guide us. Uh, in John 3, he said that the Spirit goes, you know, it's like the wind. Goes, you know where it's coming, you don't know where. So the Spirit of God leads you aright. If the Spirit of God tells me that, go through this uh, board here, I will just be going because I know that it is God that has said it. And it will do it. So, as much as possible. Then, um, I wanted to comment on two scriptures that was used: the Abacock, uh, uh, Abacock three two, and the one you see. We need to understand. And then John, um, Jeremiah twenty nine, eleven. Okay. Yeah. Um, thank God we spoke last week. I think last week that the Bible. The, the Old Testament, or most of the things that we get in the Bible, because it's not written to us, they were written for particular purposes. And because they are written for particular purposes, they were like principles. And then, when we want to use it, we use it as an application. For example, uh, I think uh, my brother has quoted uh, Joshua 1.8, Jeremiah 29.11, and our sister uh, quoted Habakkuk. See, all those things, in fact, he, he told us the meaning of the uh, uh, Joshua 1 8. The power, the, the thing that the sources that he was taking is this for Joshua to be able to take those people because that's what it was a particular purpose, a particular uh, uh, errand, and that errand is to take those people back. So when we use it, we know that when God gives us, when He send us on an errand, we receive something specifically from the Spirit then we know that when we follow the principle of the Bible and follow everything, there will be sources. Not sources in academic, not sources in this thing, but anything that the Spirit tells us to do. That's why the Bible says that those that are led by the Spirit, they are the children of God. We are children of God. We are not men of God. Leave men of God alone. Men live outside the house. They don't come inside. They don't jump on bed with Father. Men, you know, they are like servants. They are there. Leave them alone. We need to be led by the Spirit all the time, all the time. So um, Jeremiah 29, 11, you read it from top, you'll see that it's applicable just as he has used it, but I don't want us to just grab it by the neck and wrink it. I don't mm -hmm. want us to do that because what he's talking about is the message that uh, uh, Jeremiah gave to the Jews before they were taken to uh, Babylon. They, when they were taken to Babylon, he has told them it's going to be 70 years. But some prophets came and said, no, God is going to take us back. And God said, uh -uh, marry, build houses, because I know the plan. So what he's saying is that whatever is happening to us in our life is according to the plan of God. We need to move with God by revelation. And you can't get revelation anywhere. It doesn't come from anywhere. It's by the Spirit of God that resides in us. Thank you so much. Mm. Bible study is getting deeper these days, huh? Oh, so I uh, just saw divine. I saw your hand. Yeah, go ahead. You're on mute, though. All right, good. Okay. So, no, I am talking about, uh, I think it's uh, Malachi, the book of Malachi, because some men of God, they, they are, I believe they are taking it from that uh, chapter 10 that we have learned something about before, you know? So they are using this, uh, that it is a tight, it's, it's a commandment. I just want to talk about that. Mm -hmm. That it is a commandment and they're bringing it as uh, uh, fear. They will quote a lot of scriptures. They will not go from the beginning to find out where that the, the, the message came from. They will just pick it from there and they begin to put fear into people. Even to, they would, would, now they are not talking about the 10 again. So they are taking from 17 that says that they shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts. 
on the day that I make them my jewel, on that day I will make them my jewel, and I will spare them, and as a man spare his own son who serves him, then you shall know again that if you didn't do all those commandments, you didn't pay the tithe, you didn't do this, you didn't do this. So these are these are these messages are against you. These promises are against you. Mm. You know, so I don't really uh, you, know, you know, you know, Pastor you said now that uh, we are children of God, we are not men of God. Yes, of course. So yeah. men, of, men of God said that let's leave men of God alone. Let's enjoy no, yeah. let's, yeah. let's enjoy our position as children of God. Yeah, okay. <laughs> You just enjoy your position as children of God. Leave men of God alone. Uh, me, I, me, I'm not a man of God. I'm a child of God. So when your children enter room, they play anyhow. So it's man of God that said that one. But for God not say that to his children. It's, it's men of God that are saying it. So for them, we have been told to leave men of God alone. I can't go for what the pastor just said. Leave them alone. Ah, we are stopping the recording now. And I, I'm going to play this song. <laughs> 